Hi, Hi Palm Tree Church. Church. We're the Wasink family, and we are going to be doing devotions from Exodus 2, 11 through 25. Time passed. Moses grew up. One day he went and saw his brothers, saw all that hard labor, and then he saw an Egyptian hit a Hebrew, one of his relatives. He looked this way and then that, and then he realized there was no one in sight. He killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. The next day he went out there again. Two Hebrew men were fighting. He spoke to the man who started this. Why are you hitting your neighbor? The man shot back. Why do you think, who do you think you are? Telling us what to do. Are you going to kill me the way you killed that Egyptian? Then Moses panicked. Word's gotten out. People know about this. Pharaoh heard about it and tried to kill Moses. But Moses got away to the land of Midian. He sat down by a well. The priest of Midian, of Midian had seven daughters. They came and drew water, filling the troughs and watering their father's sheep. When some shepherds came and chased the girls off, Moses came to their rescue and helped them water their sheep. When they got home to their father, Ruel, he said, That didn't take long. Why are you back so soon? An Egyptian, they said, rescued us from a bunch of shepherds. Why, he even drew water for us and watered the sheep. He said, So where is he? Why did you leave him behind? Invite him so he can have something to eat with us. Moses agreed to settle down there with the man, who then gave his daughter Zipporah to him for his wife. She had a son, and Moses named him Gershom saying, I am a sojourner in a foreign country. Many years later, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under the slavery and cried out. Their cries for relief from their hard labor ascended to God. God listened to their groanings. God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw that what was going on with Israel, God understood. And now we'll read the devotions um, of week three, day five. I have a child who has a strong heart for justice. He is not just overcome when he sees someone mistreated. He is compelled to action. I often wonder what God will do with that trait, that is, once he refines it. I think that was the situation with Moses. In this short chapter, we see him compelled to intervene on another's behalf three times. First with the Hebrew slave, then with the spat between the Hebrews, and finally, on behalf of the seven daughters who were gathering water, he had an innate desire to protect. We are all made in God's image, and that is why we all bear traits of our Father. These are imperfect and tarnished now because of sin, but anything good from love to mercy to justice to kindness comes from Him. However, our raw material has to be refined so we can use it for His purpose. The reason of our church is named the Foundry is because of this analogy. We, came, we come into God's family as tarnished, broken, jagged, raw material. God melts us down and refines us. Every time we are melted down, more of what doesn't belong rises to the surface, where God can scrape it away. Over time, we are transformed and made ready for his purposes. This is what happened in Moses' life. He was sure he knew his purpose. He pulsed through his whole being every time he saw someone being mistreated. But he needed time in God's furnace. For Moses, it would be 40 years in the desert sun. Do you feel like you know what you were made to do? Are you wondering why every time you try it, it doesn't seem to work? Trust in God's craftsmanship. Let him do the work in you, and he will do his work through you in his time. We miss seeing your faces, Foundry. Hopefully you all are staying safe and healthy, and thanks for joining our crazy family for devotions. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.